Hello and welcome to another lesson in microchip PIC uh, construction and programming. We will be today we will be looking at serializing data, which is basically taking a whole bunch of parallel inputs and converting them to a logic binary number representation of the input data and feeding that into our chips. Now that begs the question of why do we want to do this? Well, the reason you would like to serialize your data is let's take for example you have an embedded system that has 16 buttons on it you know a whole bunch of buttons uh, that do many different that you know are all your inputs you know to your deal that wanna, you want to do many different things with well let's say for space concerns you want to use the our, the our chip that we've been using the 16F676 which is only a 14 pin chip including power and ground so basically what you got going on is you've got way more uh, inputs than you do pins on your chip so well, what are you gonna do well that's when you want to serialize that data you want to take it and make uh, if you have 16 make 16 bit binary numbers that represent the states that those switches are in and to do this you're gonna use what's called a parallel to serial shift register pretty self-explanatory takes the parallel parallel data and changes it to serial and that's what we're going to be looking at today the the chip that we're going to be looking at today is going to be the M74 HC 597 uh, 8-bit latch shift register from ST Microelectronics um, you can get these from uh, other manufacturers too you don't have to use ST um, just remember that uh, to put in the number 597 it's a 74597 chip which is the parallel to serial shift register and I think NXP um, Texas Instruments many different uh, companies make these so you don't have to stick with ST this is just one that I'm using for example but basically we're gonna roll down through here and I'm gonna show you um, here's the pin layout that you've got you've got your power, your VCC, and your ground. You've got um, A through H is your input. So in this case this one is only 8-bit. So it does 8 um, IOs basically. It'll take 8 eight inputs. So you've got A through H is your 8 inputs. You've got your serial out. This is the line that you'll take out to your pick for the serial data. You've got your serial clear. You've got your shift clock. You've got your latch clock you've got your serial load and you've got the serial input and basically what serial input is a lot of people I know a lot you're gonna think well input I, wh why do I want to input I want to output you know from this chip I don't want to input stuff into it well that's for if let's say in our case our example um, you've got your 16 well 8 wouldn't be enough you need two of these chips well the way that these are constructed which we'll see here in a minute um, you can actually you can do that you can actually double these chips up and you just take the serial output of one chip and take it down to the serial input of another exact chip like this and they'll just they'll basically cascade together now you you'll just double it you'll have a through h up here and then you know continuing on you know another you know a through h on another chip so you have 16 now and you can keep on going and keep cascading these and get 16 32 you know however many you want however the only limitation that you'll have with that is your pick chip you'll have to drive uh, the clocks and the and certain you know the data lines and whatnot with um, your pick chip to get it to function properly and you can only add so many you can only source current to so many of these devices um, in fact this one in particular I think is TTL logic which is, is stands for transistor to transistor logic it's not like CMOS circuits if you've ever dealt with CMOS circuits where they're all MOS technology which draw no current um, on their on their gates um, of their of the transistors so this one is built out of uh, kind of like bipolar junction transistors or BJTs which they do draw draw some current so you want to watch that make sure and check your data sheets make sure that you know how many of these you can stack on a certain port and it'll be in the power requirements section of the data sheet for how much it can sync and source so you want to check that out before you go stacking a whole ton of these together now the next thing is we will go ahead and scroll on down and we'll take a look at oh yes I forgot there's um, these two tables that are very helpful they explain basically what each one of these pins are and what they do and uh, like for instance the two clocks they're low to high edge triggers so they're pos positive edge triggered um, oh and another thing with these terms um, 
I, I'm just going to assume that most of you uh, know uh, logic circuits, know how uh, logic works, and so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time describing what different uh, terms mean and the different logic gates and whatnot. I'm just going to assume that you know those. So uh, if you if you don't, if you're kind of new to this, you can just Google it. There's tons of information on Google, on even on Wikipedia. So if you want to watch Wikipedia, be careful taking stuff, you know, too, you know, serious from Wikipedia because it is a wiki. Um, people can accidentally update stuff wrong, but I mean, for the most part, it's at least on the logic things that I've looked at on Wikipedia. It seems like it's it's very good source. So, but like I said, just kind of read at your own discretion on on Wikipedia. But there's other than Wikipedia, there's tons of other data sheets and things that'll give you some insight into logic. So anyway, moving on. Um, here's your truth table, basically that gives you. A all the different kind of ideas and scenarios of what will happen and how it will react to different inputs. Uh, but the main thing we're going to look at is this logic diagram. So basically what you've got is you've got some D flip-flops that these are your latch, what, what this data sheet will call the latch section of it. And then um, that's like this RCK is the clock for your D, D flip-flops. They call this the latch clock in here and then you've got your SR flip-flops which this is your serial uh, registers is what they call these. These are your latch register or serial register and this is just an SR flip-flop and the clock for this is what they're calling your serial clock. Um, here's your serial in so you can see how this works. You've got basically a register for every bit so you got eight registers and see it comes out. So basically see how these are all just kinda like piggyback into each other? Basically you'll take the the output of this one and just tie it to the serial input of the of the of a new chip of a different chip, and see if it, see it just, it'll just continue on down. It'll just keep going, and then of the new chip, the second chip, you'll just then you'll take that output to the to the pick. So basically, you're taking eight or sixteen or however many pins, and you're reducing it down to about to four pins, and the pins that are the four pins that you're going to use is going to be the serial data line, your QH prime, your shift clock your latch clock and I use this S load to clear with so you can clear the data out and as you can see you got some NAND gates and basically what you're going to do is with the S load if you drive the S load to a high it's going to become a low which is going to come out here which will basically clear everything out and then if you drive it to a high then it'll come over here and this basically becomes like a NOT gate essentially and just it goes ahead and passes the data on so that's how you do it. this S clear I don't use what I do with this one is I take this one and I tie it to a high is what I'm going to do and then that will basically ensure that this will just pass the data right on through is what it'll do and so that way it doesn't get it doesn't get uh, interrupted so that's just a basically another way of clearing if you want to, but I just take that one and drive it high nonstop, and we'll see that in our circuit. And so basically, so all you need is just these four, this one, that one, and that one, and then your data. So let's go ahead and take a look at the circuit, why don't we? Uh, pull it up here. All right, let's make this a little bit bigger, make it a little easier to see, and yeah, we'll go a little bigger. Okay, so basically you got your circuit. Here's, here's our voltage regulator that we always use, our 7805. We've got our two capacitors, and we got five volts and ground, and we got our mem clear pulled up to a high through that 10k ohm resistor we've seen before. And then over here we got our LED, and what we're going to do is we're going to basically make this LED blink the number of times of which switch is activated is how our code's going to go. Basically, if you push switch one, it'll blink once. If you push switch two, it blinks twice, and so on and so forth. But the main focus that we're going to look at is this bad boy right here is our shift register. So basically what we're doing is like again, like I said, this 10k ohm resistor, we're driving that S S clear to a high. That way, basically when it comes out of these register or comes out of this NAND gate, it just gets passed straight to straight to our deal. It doesn't we don't have any interruption in it. So um, the way we'll use clearing is we'll use the S load. And as you can see, S load is taken out, and we got S load coming to RC5. And then we've got our RCK, our SCK, which is our latch and storage clocks. So they're coming over here and hopping into our chip. And then we've also got our serial data out coming over and up into our chip. Now over here on the 
on the other side. Oh, and this is another thing. If you're not using the serial line, whichever chip you're not using the serial line on, um, just go ahead and pull that to a ground. That way it's a zero. And that way you don't have to worry about it, that pin floating or doing anything weird, you know, and causing instability. Just go ahead and pull that to a ground. Okay, so we give it power and ground, our five volts and uh, ground. Then what we're going to do is we're going to come over here, and I use a resistor network just because you can buy them. They j they look like a little IC chip, but they're you know uh, those of you that don't know what that is, they're uh, basically just like looks like an IC chip, but it's it's got loads of resistors in it. And this one in this case is uh, got eight resistors in it. That's what it's got, and so it just saves saves room on your board. Uh, it's just nice to have. So put a resistor network. You're going to tie one side to a high because this is going to be our pull-up resistor network. If you've uh, seen my previous uh, videos that we talk about uh, pull-up and pull-down resistor networks, I personal preference like the pull-up resistor networks. So that's what we're using here. So we tie one side to a high and then the other side goes to all of our inputs. A, B, C, D, F, G, H. So we go to. Then down here we've got our eight switches for our deals. We tie one side of them all the way to ground, and then the open side, the normally open side of it, we're then gonna piggyback on to our different ones. So switch one goes to our first one goes to A, switch two is B, C, and all the way down. So basically, it's it's a lot of the same thing. Um, the main thing you want to get straight is your which clear you're gonna use and which way you're gonna tie it to a high or low. And basically, I like using the S load. So you just take the clear and pull it to a high. That way it it's basically gets out of your way. Um, and then basically here's our, our LED again, our 470 ohm resistor. Makes it nice and bright. Put it there. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it for your hardware hookup. Uh, very straightforward, very simple. Just need those four pins. That's basically it. So now we will get into the coding section in part two. So I'm going to take a break here, and then we'll be back with uh, Look for Video Part 2 on this, and we'll get into the coding section for this one.